Hello, I am here with my handsome husband. <laughs> we have been wanting to record this video for a while and I have gotten a lot of requests regarding emergency, stash, survival, food and survival equipment. And the reason being that one, obviously the world is not in a really good place right now. We have rumors of meat being taken away from us or being limited. Our currency is obviously being threatened and it's just a different world and it's changing rapidly. So that's one reason for this, but the main reason... <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Go lay down. The main lay reason down. is that we are believers and we believe that we are in the end times. And that is uh, a really heavy thing to say here, but we are saying it with confidence. And, and our lives, you know, Tyler has his job, I have my job, but our number one calling is to lead others to Christ. And this is something that we've chosen to be outspoken about. And so if you want to do more research on the end times, I would recommend reading the Bible. Tyler, do you have any YouTube people that you listen to that are good resources on this? I think for me, where I found the most, I want to say education, but just insight, it's just bouncing around a lot because I was raised in a household that believed that the rapture is coming before the tribulation and all believers are going to be taken out of the earth. And that's that's the heart or that's a belief that I've kind of stepped away from. I, I don't personally believe that scripture supports a, a rapture where we don't go through the, the final events of earth before Jesus return. I believe that we will be caught up to meet him in the clouds, just as it says in the scripture, and we will be raptured in that moment. But I don't think it happens before, you know, all the end time events. So knowing that, and 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 if you step into believing that, then uh, that kind of changes the storyline for what we as believers are going to have to go through. Uh, it says in Revelation that the Antichrist will be given, that the Antichrist during some part of his leadership will be given authority to uh, be victorious against believers, to be victorious against those who, you know, swear allegiance to Christ and he will be given overwhelming victory in that. So as believers, if we believe we're going through tribulation and if we believe that's going to be happening in our lifetime, then we need to step into this season mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, and every every Lee be prepared to experience persecution and experience persecution that may not lead to the outcome that we would hope. You know, that could mean to us being killed for our faith. That could be that could lead to us losing everything and that's something that we need to be ready to uh, step into if that's what um, what happens so I've been preparing us through just putting a lot of supplies together and I do want to add a caveat in the and you know for the rest of this video that I put all these together not because I have this mindset of trying to escape and run off into the woods and, and avoid everything that's coming I also didn't put this together because I expect God or I'm not I'm acting in a place where I don't expect God to take care of us through this season, whatever that looks like. I did this because we have a family, a baby on the way. We don't know what the life, what life looks like. We don't know if Jesus comes back this year or in a hundred years, but regardless, I want to be doing everything within my power to be setting us up for success so that when the day comes, if the day comes where we're tested in a way that we may need some of these things or not, um, you know, I did the part that I felt like I should be doing and need to be doing to just set us up for, like I said, for success and allow God to do the rest. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. I don't know how life looks like for the next week, for the next month, for the next five years or anything like that. I have my own personal convictions on where the world's going. Um, but I want to be in a position to be obedient and also be prepared. Um, and that, that line is something that we'll just have to walk out over time. So. Yeah. And for everyone out there, you have to pray about and think about how much you want to invest in being prepared and what that looks like for you. For us, we definitely want to move further away from Chicago or any major cities, which we're doing. And we were blessed to find a place with some land so that we can have animals and become more self-sustaining. We've considered solar. We're not going down that route right now. Um, and that's something that you have to decide with your spouse or by yourself and just be in prayer about that. Another thing that we've talked about is with our new property, not just hosting my retreats from there, hopefully one day, but also it being sort of a solitude if we do enter the end times for other Christians to come and stay in, or even non-believers, but non-believers, you know, if we're martyred, we can leave behind videos talking about this is what is happening, um, and hopefully witnessing to others and helping others come to Christ. So yeah, and I'll add, there's definitely 
an unlimited amount of uh, theological difference in regards to eschatology, which is just the study of end times. There is plenty um, within the church that believe we're going to be raptured before tribulation, midway, at the end. Um, so regardless of where you stand in that belief, um, there are some things that I think we can all get behind. Um, I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians 5 real quick. And regardless of when the rapture happens, this is a direct direct command from Jesus Christ himself. So we as believers, it's are expected to be obedient to him. Um, and this is something he directly tells us outside of what we personally believe the events and the timeline for those events happen. These are things that we need to, um, I think that are beyond dispute. So in 1 Thessalonians 5, I'll just start in verse 1. It says, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Which I'm sure a lot of people who are, who've spent time in the Word or heard anything about end times and book of Revelation, they've heard the phrase, the day of the Lord, um, and the returning of the Lord, and, and that it happens like the thief in the night. So that should be a familiar um, statement or way to phrase this. So Jesus is addressing this, and he's addressing to the people in the crowd right there with him. He says that concerning the day of the Lord, it will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon, come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. And this is where the order comes in. This is where the direct command from Jesus comes to us, to believers, to the followers who were in the crowd right at that moment. He said, but you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. For me, I see that verse, those verses, as not only supporting a later uh, rapture event, but even if the rapture happened in a timeline that I didn't expect, what I definitely don't question is the fact that Jesus is telling us as believers and his followers, the ones who are behind him and supporting him, that we are not to be taken by surprise by the events that are to come, period. We may not know the exact day or hour he returns, but we are not to be taken by surprise. Um, so us preparing like this, us spending more time in the Word, um, and us stepping into just belief that he's coming soon is us us doing what we feel like we need to do to not be taken by surprise and maybe be able to help other people along the way. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment. And Tyler has done most of this preparing in terms even just pointing me and showing me scriptures and giving me content and videos to consider I was torn for a while I thought that Jesus would come back before tribulation growing up and I just always thought we would be taking up taken up in the rapture before anything bad really happened and then when you look at the scriptures I don't see that I don't see that happening so I would encourage you again to read your Bible and go from there and then I guess we'll go through some of the survival equipment that we've gotten. Yeah. <clears throat> Stay Loki. Stay over there. Go lay down. <laughs> right where you were at. You were good right where you were at. Lay down, Loki. Lay down. <laughs> lay down, Loki. Just relax. Oh, boy. Stay. So, Tyler, I mean, we created a budget for this. Obviously, this is something that will take time to accumulate all of this stuff and i literally have played no part i mean he told me to pull out some underwear and a bra he asked me my sizes and he did all of this and so he is going to walk us th through this stuff and tyler if someone can't afford or doesn't want to get this much stuff at the end or at some point i want to talk about what are some of the like top five things that someone should get to be prepared yeah so i want to like redirect kind of my idea behind this setup or these these bug out bags for both of us this is less with the intention of all right now we're prepared for the tribulation and, and whatever to come no this is more set up for if we were out and about if we were not in our place of safety be it our home on our property at a neighbor's house something like that where we were caught out in a way we didn't expect um yeah this is enough ideally to get us back to that place of safety um, so this is more, I would say, maybe like a three-day, minus some things I still got to add to this, you know, to these things, to these bags for us. This is more like a couple day, we're out on, on foot, um, and we got to, we got to trek it back home type of, type of setup. 
Um, so if for the people who maybe this is not something that they feel they can do, or maybe this is outside of a budget, I would say the best thing you can do is just stock up on necessities. Yeah. Food and water, food and water. Um, get water bottles, fill up water containers, start stacking up water, start getting food, be it frozen food, dehydrated meat, um, do it, something that is readily accessible that won't go bad really quickly. Um, but I think the most important thing would be um, food and water. And then if you want to take it past that into some type of bug out bag, I call it a bug out bag, um, or just some type of emergency, emergency kit that you keep in your car or wherever you're going, um, just the bare minimal things that you can afford. Uh, there's a lot of things in here that not, there's a lot of things in here and there's also backups for those things in here that not everybody needs. Um, so kind of as I go through this, maybe take a mental note or a, met, a written list of like, okay, um, he has flares, do I really need flares? No, you may not need flares. Um, but something to cleanse water, that might be more of a priority if you, mm. if you only have 20 bucks to spend. Yeah. Um, so I, I got both of us a backpack. This is about a 60 liter backpack. Uh, water resistant, not completely waterproof. So I did get some covers for both our backpacks that can go on the outside of it. Um, and this is Rebecca's. And so I'll just go through kind of very briefly um, the things that I got for her. She, we pretty much have the same things. There's a couple things in her bag that I don't have. And there's a couple things in my bag that she doesn't have. Um, neither are, are, I would say life or death. It's just, um, just some slight differences because ideally if we were caught out and about we're not going to be separate so you know this th these two setups work better together but they work just fine by themselves mm. um so the bag these are life straws or uh water straws if i'm not mistaken these things last tens of thousands of gallons of water and you can literally put this into a water source and, and drink directly out of it. Is there any particular uh, brand or are they pretty I, generic? The majority of stuff, it's just like a straw. You put this in the water and you drink straight out of it. Um, like I don't know off the top of my head how much this is supposed to last. I'm sure it's in there, but I, I think these last tens of thousands of gallons. There's, these last quite a while. Cool. Um, and there's no chemicals or anything like that in regards to how they filter and stuff like that. I bought most of the stuff off Amazon, not gonna lie. I, <laughs> I sell on Amazon and I buy on Amazon. Um, so the majority of the thing, these things bought on Amazon, which means that the majority of these things have different brands. Um, I'm not particularly stuck on any brand for any of this stuff. Um, I either went with the things that had the best reviews or that was at the best price. Um, for pretty much everything here, I, I wouldn't say that there's anything, one brand you got to look for. So I got us a couple ways to get healthy or uh, clean water. So two straws, one is a backup. Um, these are water cleansing. It's it's like a it's like a powder. So this has or this supports 2.5 gallons of water. Um, so if you have a larger uh, container for water, that's something you could just put that in there and let and let it do what it's supposed to do. If you're just on the road and you're trying to put this in a stream and drink some water real quick, that'd be a great way. And then this is another form. This is to put into water, and I think this is even for larger containers. Um, let's see, or actually smaller, one quart. Um, for per two tablets so this cleanses two tablets or excuse me two tablets of this cleanses one quart so this is for a larger container slightly smaller and this is just for a drink on the go cool i wanted layers i didn't want just one way to be able to get clean water um these are bladders water bladders so you know the, the idea behind this is you have one that's you fill up for for non-clean water you'd use these one of these two things to cleanse this and you can transfer it into the new container Maybe you could use this for, you could use it for fuel if you needed to, but this is, um, I got this for water drinking and water reservoir for us to be able to carry water with us um, or just have it available if needed. Um, silverware set, nothing crazy. This is something that is in Rebecca's bag that's not in my bag. This is just a very basic cooking, uh, not cooking, but like eating ware, like silverware plates. Um, they're all yeah. stainless steel. You could probably cook on these. Um, but just a very small basic kit to be able to eat food on the go. Um, like I said, that's enough for more than just us two. So ideally, if we were together, that'd be more than enough. If she was by herself or I was without it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, that's just one of those ones. Or if things. it is the end of the world, you would still be able to eat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, flashlight. This is a handheld flashlight, obviously, already completely recharged. Uh, all the things that are electronic here, I got without batteries. 
Um, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I don't think anything here had batteries. So there aren't things here that need to be, I need to carry a, a stock full of, of batteries. They're rechargeable. Um, I have a couple charging cords. I have some other ones on the way and, and some charging blocks so that we can recharge these things without, um, at any point along the way without having to, um, you know, worry about carrying the weight of batteries. So flashlight that's already charged up, a multi-tool kit. I would say this is definitely one of those priority items okay. for sure if you were on a budget, a small budget. Um, the, this one has like 21 things that it does or has 21 components of it. Also on Amazon, not too expensive. I think this was, <clears throat> I want to say this one was like 24, 25 bucks. What would you search for on Amazon to find something multi -tools. like that? Multi-tools. Just multi-tools. Um, there's plenty of brands. This one's Mossy Oak, not that expensive. It had 21. There's other ones with 19 and that do 19 different things or 15 different things. Um, this one was a good deal, good reviews and stuff like that. This is a headlamp. Uh, so two layers of light here. Obviously handheld. This one's on your head. This one I got specifically because it does white light. We'll still probably be able to see it. <clears throat> Strobe light. And then what I really cared about was the red light separately. Um, Why did you care about that? Because at nighttime, red light travels the least far distance. So if we were mm -hmm. in a situation where we needed to be out and about at night and we weren't trying to expose ourselves unnecessarily, we could use red light. Um, you know, if, if you're within eyesight, you can probably still see it, but it, red light does not travel as far as white light does. Um, so it's just a safer option in regards to lighting that I, I wanted us to be able to have. So we both have these. Um, and I also wanted it separate so that I don't have to cycle through white light to get to the red light. Yeah. Um, I can just go straight there because, you, I mean, you just don't know. If, you know, let's say this isn't, let's say you're not in a scenario where it has anything to do with the end of the world and we're just experiencing riots again like we were doing through COVID. Um, last thing I want to do at nighttime is expose myself uh, if I'm in a bad place by having to cycle through white light just to get to a red light so that I can see the people that I don't want them to be seeing me. Um, and also, I got it in a headlamp, small format, so I can just put it right on our heads and, and you know, just keep my hands free. Just a flip um, pocket knife, nothing crazy. I got this for her. I didn't get this one for myself. I have other knives and stuff like that. So, uh, a radio. I got a two pack for both of us. So, these are synced together, and I already have earpieces plugged in. That way, if we need to just put on our belt, run it up to our ear so that any of the noise between us is only be t only heard by us in our ears that works and and this should work for pretty good distance although we've not really tested it um once again the battery's already charged on that safety glasses this is a large battery pack so this is something that and it's solar powered so it's i've already fully charged it so it's good to go it can charge our phone it can charge any of these things if we plug it in um, however, this is not something I have to charge by plugging the wall. It's solar. So this is a solar panel. So we could charge this itself and charge our devices. Um, and it also has a flashlight on it, although I don't need to. I don't think I would use that as a flashlight except in an emergency emergency. That um, seemed like a really good item for someone to get. Solar stuff? Yeah. A yeah, so, I mean, rechargeable awesome. so battery. This, if I need this to charge this again, if I need this to charge my flashlight or this again, if I need this to charge my phone, I have that. Yeah. This is more than enough to charge all that. But also, I don't have to worry about recharging this. Yeah. Um, because, you know, worst case worst case scenario, I could strap this on the back of her backpack or my backpack while I'm out hiking, hopefully on a sunny day, and this could just absorb sunlight through the day. Right. Um, but, yeah, the solar is, is definitely So that, that's called a solar battery? Uh, I don't know what the actual like brand or anything of, of this is but called. how would but someone search solar, for that uh, solar power battery pack okay yeah. and obviously you can get the cords that fit for whatever you need this one has two usbs and what's that a, a mini usb so i could charge more than one thing at one time cool um and i have one and she has one so <clears throat> we should have more than enough power in that regard this like i said I, i'm a big fan of having uh, backups, backups for everything. So this is a flint and a flint starter. If I can get it to you got it. Did it spark? Yeah. The first layer has to come on. There we go. Nice. So, not my go-to way to start a fire, but if needed, that, that will last plenty long enough. This is a little bracelet I got for both of us that has a compass. It also has its own little flint starter on here, um, if absolutely needed. And then 
mine's already just buckled on my backpack, so just not something I would expect to be my go-to, um, but just as a backup, I would probably go to this as my backup, or my go-to, an actual lighter, <laughs> to start a fire if needed, and I got extra fuel for it, and we both have one of these, so this is just a butane lighter. Um, so if I, you know, for whatever reason we couldn't do this, I know that I have flint here and I can start a fire, or I have this and I can start a fire, and we both have it. <clears throat> <coughs> Flares, two, glow sticks, a couple of them. These are fire starter, I don't even know what you want to call them, um, little pucks, but I could just take that actual butane lighter, light these on fire, and then this I can use as kind of starting um, starter to get a real fire going. Um, instead of trying to kindle wet wood or mm. twi twigs or leaves and stuff like that. What would glow sticks be used for? Light anything. Um, instead of a flashlight? <clears throat> or to send a signal? Uh, not necessarily, but let's say that we were in a situation where it was raining, um, soaking wet, and we don't really have the ability to use any of those three things. A flare is definitely not the most feasible option because those will not go out. Yeah. Um, and using a light, these this is a much, I want to say, softer light. Um, they don't last forever, forever, obviously. But maybe maybe we're inside of a tent and we don't really want to expose all this other stuff. Like I don't mm. want a fire inside of our tent. Um, just a small light. It, it, you, know, you you never know. Um, maybe we're <laughs> if you're clearing rooms and you want to make sure that the person behind you or has already this room has already been checked, you can drop a glow stick in there. Like there's there's a hundred different reasons for a glow stick. Maybe you're trying to look in a bag. And instead of trying to hold a flashlight, you can just put a glow stick in a bag. Um, you'll be able to look around while you're while you're scrubbing through your bag. That's cool. Um, instead of having to have a direct light on something. But they have a hundred different uses. Matches, more. So I mean, I have, what's that? One, two, three, four. These could use be used to start a fire. More, four or five ways to start a fire. <clears throat> three ways to get clean water. Um, then obviously these are pretty self-explanatory. Some lanyards, some locks different types of tape, like electrical tape. This is like thread, threaded electrical tape. I, mean, you wouldn't, I wouldn't use this directly to, to wire um, wires together, but it re is really good on like, here, I'll show you. It's like fabric tape. These are the same as this. I personally didn't want this bright neon green and I'll probably do the same thing to hers. So I wrapped all mine in this black stuff mm. um, just to make it a little bit more discreet than this big neon green thing. Good point. Um, that if you were out in the woods, this is not probably a naturally occurring color. Not that, and black really isn't as much, but it's definitely more than, than that. Um, <clears throat> and on the flip side of that, here's reflective tape. I mean, I just don't know. Like these are things that you, would this be the top of the list for your lip for your uh, emergency kit? Maybe not, but for how small we are, you know, I I don't know the scenario that could arise where maybe I do want to be seen and I need to get something reflective, um, and I want to make sure that that it it's something I have is going to catch the light, so I have got different colors for each of us. Um, this is a right. What is this called? <clears throat> yeah, right in the rain. So. This notepad, you can, it can be raining out completely, and you can write what? this and not worry about getting getting damaged. And then this this pencil is a heavy duty pencil that I got meant to write on this too. So Sharpies, pens, write in the rain pencil. That's so cool. And this so that that way, even if you wow. um, you're not in ideal weather conditions, you can still write. This is a little handheld siphoning kit. So if you needed to get fuel, if you need to get fuel out of another car and put it in yours, whatever that may be. This is just a little siphoning kit that I got for both of us so that you can extract some fuel without having to use your mouth. Um, this baggie has just different ties. I mean, I think this is 50 feet of 550 cord, a whole bunch of zip ties, a <clears throat> whole bunch of um, rubber bands. I've already used probably half the rubber bands on different, different things. Um, you just don't even know what you're going to need that type of stuff for, so I wanted to have it available. Um, dude wipes, wet wipes. <clears throat> that and foot powder, you definitely want to have. Uh, you don't want to be getting funky foot health, uh, body skin health out in the uh, in the sticks is something that you got to take as a priority. So, foot powder for your feet, wet wipes for for everything else. You want to make sure you have the ability to take care of yourself, especially when you start getting wet and sweaty and nasty and gross. 
Um, there's a poncho next to it. There's actually a couple ponchos in this kit. That one's green. There's one over there that's white or clear. Um, another thing I wanted to say is you don't know when you're going to be in a situation where none of this kit is for you. You could be out on the road and someone else could be in a bad situation and you need to be able to provide something that could help them. So this is, a lot of this is, um, has the potential to just be of a help to someone else, not even just yourself. Yeah. Um, so I got a couple emergency blankets over there. <clears throat> Those are tiny. Tiny, yeah, but they open up large. This is, these are maps of what it says, the Eastern United States. And so I, you know, I could have gotten a map. I actually have a huge atlas that won't be on our, in our mobile kit. Um, for the whole country but those are all the states that me and Rebecca will probably be in most likely so I got maps that could get us pretty much anywhere um, and that I'll put in some type of waterproof I have some waterproof bags over here so that that that's, that, that doesn't get ruined um, we'll come back over here well that here we'll stay over here a tent <clears throat> some a couple big trash bags just in case you don't know those could I was watching a video today black trash bags if you were in a really bad scenario you ran out of fuel you could use a trash bag for to put gasoline or diesel in it hmm. um, just be very careful fill that up and you know walk back to where we need it from so not the ideal situation but it has multiple purposes for sure and then we'll start getting into clothing so i got three sets of thick wool socks for rebecca this is some thermal top and bottom for her some gloves <clears throat> These are um, some microfiber towels. This is like supposed to be a cooling effect towel. It's very long though, so I'm not really sure how confident I am in that. A whole brand new container of plug Redmond and Realite Electrolyte Salt. <laughs> we each have one of these. This might be mandatory, I don't know, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> um, some rain pants for her, rain jacket for her. This is a molly bag for extra magazines for her whenever she gets her gun when we get to North Carolina. A molly bag and this. magazines are for guns and for those who don't understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I can show you mine over there. But yeah. Some magazines in it. Um, yeah, so whenever Rebecca gets her first gun when we get to North Carolina, she'll be able to put some mags in here so for extra, extra ammo. This can hold two magazines for a pistol and two for a rifle. Um, this is white right now. I will probably paint this and I have this for me and her. Um, there's mine over there. This is like mosquito netting. This is, I think mm -hmm. it's like 10 by 20 feet or something. This is very large. Um, so you don't know when you're going to be in a situation where maybe you're having to camp or, or anything. Um, I don't want to be eaten up by bugs in nature. So I'll probably paint this to be a more natural color, like maybe green and brown, I'll spray paint it just so that it blends in better um, and not just have this big white meshy um, tarp, but I wanted this to be available, and that's just something you can open up and put over your tent, or open up, put wherever it may be. Um, yeah. Down, did we get everything over there? Yeah, now we're down here. These are some waterproof bags, some other just, um, zip tie bags or pull tie bags so that I can put some of this stuff in there. I don't want all this stuff just free floating in her backpack or in my backpack. I want it to be not only grouped together, but also readily accessible. You know, it's not helpful if you can't get to it or don't know where it is when you need it. Um, so those bags are with that intention. You know, these aren't extra clothes to wear if they're soaking wet. They're just soaking wet clothes, it's extra weight. So I wanna make sure that the things we got to protect us are we're protecting those things. Um, now down here, these are some extra, this is shirts, underwear, shorts for her. Um, and then this right here is just a very, very, very basic, we call it a boo-boo kit. <laughs> uh, just little things. Bandages, some adhesives, some gauze. Um, you know, this is not a mass casualty kit. This is not something where if you, if there was an uh, active shooter and five, six people had gotten shot and you're there trying to treat trauma. This is not the kit, but this is definitely more than enough to get you by with the most basic levels. You know, if you get some nicks and cuts and little scratches or things like that. And those are the um, tourniquets. And yeah, so as part of that kit, although those would probably be more for, for severe injuries, are some tourniquets. So she has two over there. Um, I have more than two spread out on my bag and in my bag and on different things. Those are extremely, that's one of the most important things in the whole medical kit is the tourniquets. Um, 
you don't just have to use them to stop blood, they can be used for anything. Let's say she had broken her leg and I needed to splint it, I could use those tourniquets to help keep the splint in place, tourniquet a splint into place. Um, you know, but what you don't want to be, and what's more likely for you to be, is in a mass casualty situation or a casualty situation, um, hopefully where you're not involved and you want to you need to be able to help people. Um, you want to you want to have tourniquets. So, and I think that covered everything that's in your bag, right? Yeah. Um, this right here is this is a way more in depth first aid, uh, you know, mass casualty anything type kit. Yeah. This is not a daily driver. We're not bringing this everywhere we go. Um, but we do want to have it available. So we keep this in our house. Yeah. How much was that? I don't know. Probably over a hundred. <laughs> this is a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. I've put other things into it over time. This has a lot of different things. Um, I can open up for it. Yeah. I let's, won't go through it all. But not all of it. But... <clears throat> this is not your everyday. Stay back, Loki. This is not your everyday. I got this for her. I got this for Rebecca. <laughs> in case she needed this, she could have some, sh some shortcuts, some cheat codes. <laughs> I need uh, that. Thank you. You know, this is not your everyday type bag uh, that you would just carry with you for every, any moment. There's so many different things in here. Yeah. Um, this is truly, if you were not mass casualty, a lot of people are hurt. you got to treat multiple people. Yeah. Um, the injuries are very bad, life and death type stuff. Yeah. You know, this, this is what you would go to. Um, so you can pretty much treat everything out of here. And I'll probably still continue to add things to this over, over time. <clears throat> Now the only things, pretty much I have the same stuff that Rebecca has, minus, you know, obviously different clothing. The only different things I have besides her, or, or things that I didn't include with her, I got this. This is a little, um, I want one. Hand saw. If I needed to cut down on um, some wood or anything, maybe start a fire. Uh, mostly what I have is weapons that she doesn't have. <laughs> uh, so I have that hand saw, that little blade right here. Um, and I have this axe, which I've already uh, hooked onto my bag. Um, and then I do have this one other thing. I got us a one terabyte flash drive. This I can plug directly in my phone. I've already done it actually to see how it worked. I can plug this directly into my phone and take stuff off my phone and put it on here without having to use a computer. Um, it's super cool. I didn't even know these really existed. And then mm. this is my <coughs> my battle belt, which I don't have for her. Um, I want one. <laughs> you all, when you don't have a baby inside you. So in here I have tourniquets. I have a tourniquet on the belt. I have a tourniquet on my bag. I have more tourniquets over there. Um, I have a knife on here. I have magazines right here. Magazines. And this is for me to keep with my bag, although be able to grab on its own, depending on what's going on. Yeah. And yeah, that's about it. Awesome. So if you had to choose five things for people to start out with, what would you choose? A bag? Yeah. Something to clean water with? Yep. Well, let me say it differently. There's things you don't need to go buy. You already have clothes. Um, so... I'm going to include clothes. You don't need to go buy those. You might probably already have some bag. It doesn't need to be some nice um, camo dot bag. It could be just any, any backpack. Um, so take a bag you already have, some clothes you already have. So understanding that those are the given. Then I would say water stuff, some type of multi-tool. That multi-tool has a knife on it. You don't, need, um, you don't need a whole hunting knife or a whole axe. Um, you could just have a multi-tool and be able to use that. So water, multi-tool, a, a first aid kit, and uh, some type of weather protection, be it poncho, rain jacket, rain clothes. Um, you know, those would be the most important, I would say. I agree. I would say the flint, too, or a way to start a fire. Yeah. So that's so affordable. Most people have a lighter on the house. They could just put pocket that. You yeah. Know, you don't need five different ways to start a fire. So if that was all you had, you know, at least and you have it all together and you put that in your back seat and under your seat just to have, it'd be pretty solid. These water straws are really cheap. Yeah. And they last a long time. So those are cool. Crazy. Awesome.